And turn with me, if you will, to the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, beginning at verse 23. We are reading today from the New King James Version, and our entire scriptural lesson text can be found on the insert in your bulletin. Ezekiel 22, verse 23. Ezekiel is giving warning to Israel, actually it's Judah, but they've been called Israel since the northern kingdom went into captivity 125 years earlier. Verse 23, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, say to her, you are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of a prophet in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured people. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made the, known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath, so I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy people, and to gain dishonest and to get dishonest gain. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus said the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken. The people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it but I found no one. Therefore, I poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for the privilege and opportunities of standing before these thy people. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Now God lays out the, all the transgressions that he found in the nation Israel. And as I said, they, this is really Judah, but they became known as Israel when the northern kingdom was taken into captivity. And the rulers are wicked and, and ruthless. They murder and extort the powerless. The priests are unholy and unworthy. They do not honor holiness or teach holiness. And the prophets are liars and proclaim false visions to the, to the people. They even lie in God's name. Even the common people cheat and deceive one another. They show no kindness to foreigners in their land. The Bible taught them that they should. Ezekiel describes a nation that has lost their soul and is on their way to destruction. They were on their way to destruction despite the warnings of the, of the prophets of their day. Ezekiel and Jeremiah, they would not turn back. God himself was looking for a way to have mercy and hold back the wrath that they had earned. The fate of the nation was sealed when God declared that he searched for a man <coughs> to stand up for righteousness in the midst of the wicked nation and could find no one. That declaration implied that, implied that God's plan was to use a righteous man to turn the nation around, but he could find no one. The description of Israel, on, of the Israel on the path of destruction sadly is a lot like the description of, of the nation we live in today, in America today. We boast and brag about being a godly nation when we as a nation have no concept of how to walk in the righteousness that God requires. No concept of what righteousness looks like. All the elements that were in place in, as Israel slid into this destruction are in place in our nation today. There is greed and dishonesty. There is ruthlessness and murder. There are false prophets and unholy men working in God's worship house. There is a hostility and a hatred to all who we suspect of being foreigners. You know, we want to build walls instead of bridges. There is no righteousness in the land. Men no longer stand for righteousness, and the nation is suffering. The statistics that I read last week and the first week are revealing and depressing. They show that our society is coming apart at the seams. 70% of all prisoners come from 
homes without a father. 80% of, of all rapists come from homes without a father. 40% of all children born in 2010 were born into single parent homes. And the, and the, and the, the, the word for the African American community even, is even worse than that. 72% of all African American children are born into single parents' homes. That puts our children at a significant disadvantage. Now that's not to blame single mothers at all. Single mothers have struggled heroically to provide for their children. Some have succeeded greatly, others have not, but that's not the argument. The argument is that if you're born to this ruthless world with only one person fighting for your survival instead of two, the deck has just been stacked against you. So you're facing an uphill battle. That can be said without question or debate. And more importantly, if you're born into this male-dominated society without the male that the plan of God meant for you to have, you're standing up for your cause. The struggles you will have to face and overcome will have just been multiplied. They're, they're, they're multiplied. But God still has an answer. God still knows how to fix the problem. God does not care about political correctness. Look at what God said in Ezekiel 22 and 30. So I sought for a man <clears throat> among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy. But I found no one. God says I'm looking for a kingdom man to stand in the gap and to declare my righteousness in the land. But what kind of man is that? What is a kingdom man and how do I become one? Or if you're a woman, how do I know a kingdom man when I see one? Well, the Apostle Paul provides an answer for us in the text of scripture from the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, beginning at verse 10. So let's turn to the text to discover what kind of man God is looking for. Now, we, we went over the first part last week, but I want to just review it again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. God is looking for a man to show up prepared to fight for what is right. To be a kingdom man, you have to show up just for battle. The reason we're losing the battle is that real men, kingdom men, are missing in action. English statesman Edmund Burke said some time ago, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. That good men do nothing. A, a, a contemporary example of that, and, we, and you know, looking at the situation in our, in our nation today, the Republicans in Congress are not standing up and saying anything about the evil that we see in Trump. And Donald Trump, President Trump, is, is showing himself to be evil on all sides, but they won't say anything. You know, they won't stand up to him. The, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do and say nothing. If you know you're in a battle against evil, then you have to be ready to fight it. The foundation of our society is under attack, whether we know it or not. God's plan for mankind is the family. God started out with one family, and he started that family out with one man. By attacking the family and manhood, the enemy is attacking the plan of God. If you, if you know you're under attack, you either fight or surrender. But the enemy, whoever gets, does not take prisoners. His goal is the destruction of all that God has created. So we have to fight whether we want to or not. God says if you just show up, I'll fight for you. There's, there's a battle going on right now between righteousness and evil, and most of the men in this country, and especially in the black community, are acting as if it has nothing to do with them. God says it has everything to do with you because I, I gave you dominion. I left you in charge, and you've been asleep at your post. Let's look at the scripture and see God's plan for man to have dominion. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now take note of that. We're going to, come, we're going to mention that in just a second. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, let us make man in our image, 
When God, he was speaking of mankind, man and woman, he gave dominion to mankind. But God is a God of order. He created Adam first, he spoke to Adam first, and he came to Adam when sin crept into the garden. He, God said to Adam, God says, where are you, Adam? I left you with a plan, a purpose, and a helpmate to carry out my plan. Where are you, and what have you done? Then, like now, Adam tried to hide from God because he had fallen short of the mark. And when he came out of hiding he st and stood to answer God for his failure, he tried to lay the blame back on God. He said, the, the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the tree and I ate. God created man and defined what his role should be. God gave man dominion, and that means authority, but God also gave man the responsibility to exercise authority in accordance to God's will. God defined the role that man should play in the society that he created. Man should lead, protect, and provide. In our society today, people ignore God's definitions and have created their own definitions. What a man is supposed to be is defined on the Oprah Winfrey show and on, on The View, and too many young men don't know what a real man is supposed to look like. That is the real victory for the enemy. We are well into the second generation of young men who have no idea of what a man is supposed to be. They either try to emulate the cruel and arrogant super macho image that rap music portrays, or they try to define themselves by the super sensitive, sissified image that the TV talk shows describe. Both are lies. Both are lies. Neither have any foundation, the true definition from God, on what a man is supposed to be. And so our young men have no truth in their lifestyle, and they're living out the lies of the devil. And when you step away from God's plan, you're inviting disaster. Some years ago, as I mentioned last week, in South Africa, the wildlife scientists came upon a strange problem. Something was killing rhinoceros. The subject list, suspect list of animals who had the ability to kill rhinoceros is a, is a short list, namely elephants. After studying the evidence, they knew for sure that the elephants were killing the rhinos. But they could not understand why. There had never been a history of elephants attacking rhinos. But what, what caused this? And they found out when they studied the problem that man had caused it. They had separated the bull elephant from the young male elephants from where they were living and placed them into a reserve. So the juvenile elephants grew up with no understanding of how an adult elephant is supposed to act. They had no role models. So since they had the size and the power, they killed without reason. Now think about that for a minute. Reflect on all the senseless healing that's going on among our young men all over this city and all over this country. There are many reasons why men are absent from the lives of their children, but none of these reasons negate the fact that they are needed, and we as a society are paying a heavy price for the absence of men. Their sons grow up with a distorted idea of what a man is, and all the society pays the price. And the Bible gives a solution to our problem if we will only heed what it says. It addresses the question of unruly young men directly and then gives us the only answer that will work. Psalm 119, verse 9 through 11, how can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now that's what the word of God says. It says that we must take heed to what God has said. If there's no man in the household, you can look to the word of God to, to get a determination of how you should act. So if we had all the young men according, living according to what the word of God says, we, we would be in a, in a better position. In our society, people are used to ignoring what God has said. People do not honor the, the notion that God has a, has a say in the way we should live. You will be scorned and ridiculed in many sections of our society if you start a conversation talking about the plan of God. But God will not be mocked. We must reap what we sow. Do not, Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, that he will also reap. And I believe that we are reaping right now what's been sown over decades of ignoring God. God is beginning to ignore us as we have ignored him. God's mercy is being withdrawn. And without the mercy of God, we have nowhere to stand. God is calling for kingdom men to come home. God is looking for men to show up ready to fight for what is right. God is calling for men to be what he designed men to be, the gatekeepers of a righteous society. That's what, that's what men are kingdom men are called to be, God's gatekeepers. Men have been asleep on their post, and we have let evil creep in. 
So we have to turn to God in obedience in order to restore kingdom condition. God is looking for man to show up prepared to fight for what is right. Men are missing in action in the, in the battle against evil. They need to show up. But just showing up is not enough. There's more that God expects for us to do. Look again at, at Galatians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. God is looking for a man to stand up, prepared to fight for what is right. Kingdom men have to show up and do what is right. Do what is right. You don't model by doing. You don't model by telling. You model by doing. God is looking for men who are willing and able to demonstrate to the young men that being a man means, means you have to sacrifice for those that you love. That is the biblical definition of manhood. You're willing to make the sacrifice. You're willing to take the hit for, for those that you love. That's the manhood that Jesus modeled. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Paul speaks to the husbands, and he says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she should be holy and without blemish. God is looking for men who are willing to pay the price to do what is right. Now, doing what is right is not the same thing as doing what is easy. And in fact, doing what is right almost always means doing what is hard. Dr. Tony Evans said that men go through three, three stages of hoods on their way to manhood. The first stage is, is malehood. You're just born male, and the only thing you're concerned with is the only thing that you can do, eating and growing, eating and growing. Second stage is boyhood. Now, a lot of, of young men get stu stuck in this stage. In the boyhood stage, you have grown in size, but you're still not what you should be because you need someone to take care of you. Our problem today is that a lot of males, regardless of age, never get out of boyhood. Men in this stage, and I know some personally, are only concerned about finding someone to take care of them. They brag about being take care of, they, taken care of by a woman. They glory in that. That is the undeveloped state of manhood that we call boyhood. And the third stage is manhood. Manhood comes when a man not only is capable of taking care of himself, but he's willing and able to take care of others. He's able to step into the role that God created for him. When a man steps up to do what God has called him to do, God empowers him. God empowers him. I assume everyone here remembers Alex Haley's classic TV miniseries, Roots, from the 1970s, and it's been out in, in various forms since then. Uh, it's a powerful and emotional series because it displays all the cruelty and brutality of, and, and of slavery and the Jim Crow era that followed it. It was especially powerful because it's a true story based on the, the history of Alex Haley's family. The part that I remember the most and that touched me the deepest emotionally was the scene after slavery during the Jim Crow era when the family was still being persecuted and manipulated as if they were still slaves by the former plantation owners on whose land they lived. Now Ben Bereen played the, the character Chicken George. And he was called Chicken George not because he was a coward but because he raised fighting chickens, roosters used in cockfighting. Now George went off to seek his fortune in the cockfighting business. While he was away, the force of evil, evil all but destroyed his family. Chicken George came back just in time to pay off all their debts that were laid up against his family and to take them away to the, from that situation to the piece of land in Tennessee where Alex Haley ended up growing up. Things did not get better until Chicken George came home and stood up for his family. It's time for all the Chicken Georges in our community to come home. Come home and stand up for your family. Look at that verse again. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. If you stand up and become the man that God is calling you to be, and if you stand with God's armor on, when the battle is over, God says that you will still be standing. Men need to trust God on that. God is looking for a man who is prepared to stand up and do what is right. God is looking for a kingdom man, and God is calling kingdom men to stand up for him. God wants men to stand up, but he doesn't want us to stand in silence. God wants men to speak up. Look at the text again, beginning in, in verse 10. We're going to read the whole, the whole passage. Finally, my brother, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand an evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What kind of man is God looking for to stand in his kingdom? God is looking for a man to show up prepared to fight for what is right. God is looking for a man to stand up, prepared to do what is right. God is looking for a man to speak up, prepared to bring God's truth to light. God is looking for a man willing to show up, and if you see that man, you tell him that God is looking for him. God is looking for a man to stand up. If you know that man, tell him that God is looking for him. God is looking for a man who is willing to speak up. If you know that man, tell him that God is looking for him. And if you are that man, God is looking for you to take your place in his kingdom work. God is looking for kingdom men. Are you that man? I'm going to answer God's call to show up, stand up, and speak up. That's what I'm going to do. What about you? What about you? Shall we stand as the choir leads us in song?